Hello. It seems you just can't keep sex education out of the news at the moment. Just a few weeks ago, the Christian Institute set out how relationships and sex education in England was changing from the start of September. Our education officer, John Denning, took us through the new guidance. Much of it good. We examined the pitfalls to look out for and we encouraged parents to be aware of what their children were being taught and how best to engage with schools in this area. Well, since then, the Department for Education has released more guidance, and I'm pleased to say that John is with me again now to help us understand its significance. OK, John, thanks for joining me. Um, we'll get to what's changed in a moment, if that's OK. Um, first of all, I'd like to hear about what hasn't changed, because actually it's, we were only sat here last month. We were talking about the changes to relationships and sex education in England. We were talking about the, the new booklet uh, that you've written that was explaining uh, this to parents very proven very popular uh, by the way and now we're back here again so is it is it already time to put this in the recycling bin no uh, i mean I, i'd really rather people didn't do that um it's everything it says um still holds true uh, the law has not changed um since we last spoke the statutory guidance from the government hasn't changed since we last spoke so actually everything that's in that booklet still holds true now as it did then what has happened is the government has given some additional guidance at the end of September. Um, and, and some of that guidance is actually really, really helpful, um, which is why we've come out now with this uh, supplement to the booklet that just picks out some of the most useful parts of, of that new guidance. I've, I've got one here. In, in fact, uh, the uh, supplement to the Relationships and Sex Education Guide this is available now on our website. Uh, if you live in England and you're on our mailing list, uh, you'll be getting one of these in the, through in the post uh, very soon too. Uh, if you order a copy of the Relationships and Sex Education Guide, one of these uh, will be included. And uh, information on how to join our mailing list uh, or how to order a copy um, is available on the screen at the moment. And there's no charge for any of that. OK, John, so let's, let's talk about what's in this new guidance then and, and why is it helpful guidance? Well, one of the things it says is that schools must be balanced in their teaching of these new subjects. Now, we'd said that before, actually, in, in, in the booklet that already, we, we'd already produced. Um, but we'd said that on the basis of general principles of law. But what's happened now is that the government itself has said a very similar thing to what we were saying in our guide, and obviously, it's helpful for parents, if they need to, to be able to quote the Department for Education's own guidance to schools if they're needing to raise some concerns over whether schools are being balanced in their treatment of, of teaching these things. So can, can you give us some examples about where this, where this balance is, is, uh, is picked up on in the guidance? Yeah, sure. So, so the, the new guidance says that schools must secure that where political issues are brought to the attention of pupils, they are offered a balanced presentation of opposing views. The meaning of political issues does not refer solely to the discussion of party politics. Political views may include equalities issues and religion, which of course includes views that might be opposed to a religious sure, point of view. Yeah. Whatever schools are teaching on those sorts of issues, equality issues, religious perspectives on relationships and sex education, all of that must be done in a balanced way. In other words, schools can't be promoting just one ideological point of view. They have to present a range of different views in a fair way, um, not marginalise a Christian view, for example. And I, I said last time that we spoke that you're getting uh, calls every day of the week, pretty much, uh, on or around these issues. And, and a lot of those are to do with parents who have got some concerns about how uh, transgenderism or how same-sex marriage is taught. So is the issue of balance that is being picked up on here, is that applied to those issues too? Yes, it is. That's right. So if a school was teaching about same-sex marriage, for example, it, it should be acknowledging that, yes, that's the law of the land. The law of the land provides for same-sex marriage, but not everybody agrees with it, and that's fine. Uh, and a school could even explain why some people might disagree with same-sex marriage. The school shouldn't be pushing a particular view it should be presenting them and, and allowing space uh, and respect for, for those different views. When it comes to transgender issues, actually, there's, there's a bit more to say because there is particular sorts of teaching around transgender issues 
that could be really harmful for children. And for the first time, really, the government is explicitly acknowledging that and, and saying some, some quite clear things um, about what schools should not teach. Specifically around stereotyping, I think. Yeah, that's right. It's to do with stereotyping. So uh, the guidance says that schools should not be teaching children that if they don't fit well with stereotypical ideas of what it is to be male or female, then they're in the wrong body and it needs changing. You're, you're quoting directly As from the I'm guidance there, yeah. The, the new guidance there, yeah, that's right. Or for that matter, that their personality is wrong and needs to change. One of the things that you, the, the main booklet uh, talks about as well is how um, some organisations um, were using the new teaching on RSE to further a uh, particular agenda in schools and, and sometimes teachers were, were helping in that. And I understand that the, the guidance gives some quite specific advice for schools on, on that particular issue as well, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, so there's a, a lot of caution advised to, for schools over how of the external bodies that they might use to support their teaching. That they're, they're really instructed to be very careful about that. Uh, and, and there's very, again, a very, very um, clear comments about schools working with organisations that promote that sort of transgender ideology. I mean, again, if I just quote a small bit from the new guidance, um, schools should not work with external agencies which promote the idea that people who don't fit in with gender stereotypes have a different gender identity, that their body is wrong and in need of changing to fit their personality. That's very clear. Very clear. So, and, and I think that does rule out a number of, of organisations that do sometimes work, in, work with schools. Okay, so we've covered some of the, the, the broad issues there. Is there anything else that specifically that the guidance addresses that is useful for people to know? Yeah, well, the guidance is, is, is helpful, I think, um, particularly for primary schools. It says that schools should be very cautious not to expose children to over-sexualised materials. Uh, and that has been an issue, even in some primary schools. So that's very welcome to see that uh, in the guidance from the government. And then even with secondary schools, um, there have been some issues where secondary schools have set homework um, or work to do over the lockdown period, um, which if, if, if um, pupils try to answer that, they end up searching online and, and potentially seeing pornography. So again, the, the new guidance is helpful in cautioning schools to be very careful about that, to think about that sort of issue. If they're setting work and pupils research online, what are they actually going to see? Uh, and, and advising schools to have great caution over that so that pupils don't end up, uh, even at secondary level, seeing, seeing pornographic images. In a previous uh, booklet that uh, you wrote, Equip for Equality, that addressed the issue of the need for schools to recognise parents' religious and philosophical beliefs and background and how teaching needs to be age appropriate and take those things into consideration as well. Is there anything new or additional or uh, helpful um, that's come out to, uh, with this new round of guidance? Yeah, well, it's, again, that's another thing where, where there's some very helpful comments. It's not anything new to, to what we already said in our booklets, but like, like we said before, it's really helpful to have the Department for Education explicitly saying these things. So the, the new guidance talks about parents' rights, um, that children should be educated uh, in, in accordance with the, with the beliefs of parents, that the beliefs of parents shouldn't be undermined by schools in their teaching. So, so there, again, there's that very useful helpful pointer to schools um, that recognises the unique place that, that parents have as a, the ultimate decision makers over their children's education. Okay, thanks John. Just a reminder that if you live in England and you're already on our mailing list, you'll be getting the supplement through the post very soon. Uh, if you're not, then to get hold of your copy of Relationships and Sex Education, a guide for Christian parents in England the, and the new supplement. In fact, any of our resources from the Christian Institute, simply join our mailing list via our website, christian.org.uk, or get in touch with our office. Details are on the screen. From John and from me, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>